sea. Great Britain, world's mightiest sea power with its far-flung fleet, aims to keep the sea lanes open for merchantmen and cargo liners, meanwhile striving for a complete blockade against ships bound for enemy harbor. In the last world war, mastery of the seas brought ultimate victory. Now Great Britain and France again look to their joint naval strength to destroy Germany's marauding fleet and thus strike a mortal blow to ensure their ultimate success. Seldom are convoyed fleets attacked, but lone ships are always in danger and many fall victim to German commands to heave to for search, seizure and destruction. Patrolling somewhere in the seven seas were Germany's three pocket battleships, the Deutschland, the Admiral Scheer, and the newest of the trio, the Admiral Graf Spee, launched in 1934. Their 10,000-ton capacity, their heavier armor, and their long-range gun power aroused the interest of admiralties throughout the world. Just before this war began, the Graf Spee sailed away with a roving commission, equipped for a long stay. Soon the world knew that the Spee was running at will far away from Europe's combat zones, harassing and destroying allied and neutral shipping in the trade lanes of the South Atlantic. Ten ships, 50,000 tons, were sunk by the guns of this modern sea warrior. In mid-December 1939, the long arm of Britain's defenses caught up with the roving raider. Three cruisers engaged this day in battle off the coast of South America. Here it was that the British cruiser Exeter surprised the Spey just as she was about to attack the French liner Formosa. Firing faster, but with shorter range guns, the Exeter kept the Spey fighting until two more English cruisers rushed into the fray, the Ajax and the Achilles. The Spey's guns had done their work on the Exeter, but the Ajax and Achilles took their revenge. Badly wounded Graf Spey steams to sanctuary in Montevideo Harbor. A tired, a shell-torn battleship with little likeness to her usual trim smartness. Her sides peppered by British guns. Her control tower blown out of commission. Catapult planes battered into uselessness. Crowds throng the waterfront, watching, waiting, just as a whole world waits with bated breath for the next scene in this international drama. Uruguayan authorities demand that the German officers and crew come ashore for registration and questioning. Those wounded during the battle offshore think only of hospital beds and relief from their pain. Dazed, puzzled, their faces reflecting the ordeal through which they are passing, the crew members begin to realize that the war is over for them. <laughs> Captain Hans Langsdorff, commander of the Graf Spee, asks, pleads, and demands that authorities allow him more time for needed repairs before forcing the Spee to sea again. Pleads to prevent internment of his men and his ship. Captain 
Captain Langstorff and his officers pose for an historic picture, standing shoulder to shoulder for the last time. Tension mounts among the milling crowds who watch. Millions listening throughout the world catch their breaths as chapter after chapter quickly unfolds in this unprecedented drama of modern naval warfare. Suspense grows to the breaking point as they see Captain Longstorff leave shore for his ship. The grim decision already made. Still another move is being made. Hovering close in the harbor waters is the German tanker Tacoma, laden with oil and stores. Suddenly she enters as an actor in this tragic war epic. From the Graf Spee, men are transferred to her decks, older members of the crew and those who are married, the bulk of the Spee's fighting force, men who leave behind them only a skeleton crew ready for whatever lies ahead. The zero hour arrives. The Spee weighs anchor, points her nose into the growing darkness of dusk, heads straight for the open sea. Only a few miles beyond, just outside the territorial waterline, two British cruisers are waiting, intent upon preventing the escape of the biggest prize the Allies could hope to capture or destroy. As sunset crosses the river Platte and the moon rides high, sheets of flame and the roar of explosions rend the air. The Graf Spee is scuttled, scuttled by its own captain to cheat waiting allied men of war at their cornered prize. In but a few minutes, the Graf Spee settles in the river's shallow waters as flames burst from exploding time bombs in magazines. Great clouds of gray smoke are blown toward shore, and as the doomed battleship lists heavily, its seams are rent asunder. Its mighty armor twisted and torn into a grim caricature of itself, the warship lies helpless, ready fodder for the flames that transform its decks into a crackling inferno. Its hollow reservoir of bulging smoke pouring endlessly to hang as a pall over the Graf Spee, now a shattered, devastated skeleton of its former might.